morning. It is seven o'clock, just before seven o'clock, and you can tell I'm looking like I just woke up. But in this video, I wanted to give you all of the reasons and my secrets for why I like going to the gym now after years of not being able to stand it, and also what my tips are and what are the things that I've learned over the years to get myself motivated even this early in the morning. So stick around, these tips are great. They've helped me so much and I know they'll help you too. first big category is to be prepared. I find preparedness is so important for getting myself to the gym. And just so you know, I'm going to put all of this in a very detailed blog post that'll be available at melissamaker.com and I've got a link for it down below. Now the first thing to do when it comes to preparedness is to choose a time of the day that actually works for you. Not a time of the day that you think is going to work for you or that you think you should be going to the gym at. No, you got to actually pick a time that fits into your schedule. So for me, I know I have to go first thing in the morning. I've left it until later in the day. It never works. I come up with 940,000 different excuses to not make it to the gym. And for me, I've always found, A, I'm a morning person. It just takes me a few minutes to get out of bed and then I have my energy. And B, once I get up and I'm still a little bit groggy, I get my gym clothes on, I go. I don't really have a lot of time to second guess it or think of another excuse as to why I can't go. So I love going to the gym first thing in the morning. You can also schedule in when you're going to the gym directly into your calendar. So I do this on my phone. And at my gym, they actually have you sign up in advance for the classes that you're going to be taking. So I go to a gym with very small class groups. So you have to sign up well in advance because you definitely want to be one of the five people who are in that class at that particular time. So I book my class in on the app and then it gives you an option to just add it to your calendar and that's exactly what I do. That way I know the days that I'm working out and then I can build the rest of my day around it. And of course if I have to move something around because I have a breakfast meeting, fine. But at least I'm looking at my calendar and I'm planning out my gym time just like I'm planning out anything else during the week. When you're preparing to go to the gym, one of the things you want to do is make sure that you eat ahead of time. My old logic told me, what, why would you eat before you go to the gym? Your whole goal is to try and burn calories here. But someone explained it to me once and it made perfect sense. You cannot drive a car when there's no fuel in it. And it's the exact same with working out. When I first started going to this gym, I wasn't eating at the beginning. And then shortly, the, uh, shortly thereafter, the trainer said to me, I think you need to start eating before you come. And I did, and it wasn't anything big. It was like half a banana and a teaspoon of nut butter or a small fruit and eight almonds or something like that. I would just eat a really small snack and honestly, my energy shot through the roof and I was able to get through the workout so much better. If you're not a morning workout person, that's fine too, or even if you are, but you need to pack a bag with your work stuff because you're going straight to work from the gym. Packing your bag the night before, and that means your clothes, your toiletries, any snacks, any food, any water bottles, anything like that, get it packed and prepared the night before. Then that way, you're just gonna be staring at it in the morning and you're gonna think, well, it's already there, I might as well go, instead of, oh, I gotta get all that together, plus this other stuff I have to do. Trust me, being prepared really helps you get to the gym. The next major subcategory is to have no excuses. And yeah, this is a pretty popular ad slogan, or you see it painted around gym walls and that kind of stuff, but it's true. The more excuses you have, the more reasons you're gonna find not to go to the gym. And the whole idea with going to the gym is just to be healthy. So let's figure out how to not make excuses when it comes to going to the gym. And the first one, at least for me, is to not have a workout buddy. Now, a workout buddy might be a great strategy for you, and if it is, amazing. For me, I found, at least with my previous workout buddies, is that I am very easily brought down. If someone's like, oh, I don't feel well today, I'm tired, I'm this, I'm that, whatever their excuses are, instantly I have the same excuse. And then instantly I am not going to the gym, I have 900 other things I'm gonna be, what did I say, 940,000 other things I'm gonna be doing? Yeah, that's pretty much what comes up. 
So for me, I don't use a gym buddy anymore. I just rely on myself. Let's say that you get sick or you go on holiday and you fall out of your regular routine. When Chad and I recently traveled uh, in May when we went to California, I brought all my workout stuff with me. I told my trainers I was gonna work out. And you know how many times I worked out on that holiday? Twice in three weeks. And that's fine, I was on holiday. But before I came home, I started to schedule in those classes. So I knew, okay, Monday morning, I'm going back to the gym. Same with Wednesday, same with Friday. And that way I got myself right back into the routine. No excuses. And the third subcategory is setting yourself up for success because it's so easy, at least if you have my kind of mentality, to set yourself up for failure at the gym that I just started to look at all the different flags that were starting to make me not do well in my new mission and I just decided to flip them on their head. It's really important that you do what you actually like doing with working out. So that means you've got to try a few different things. Just because your friend or colleague lost all this weight and gained all this muscle from doing one particular type of exercise, it's really not necessarily the exercise, it's the fact that they like doing it. They keep going back, they're consistent, that's the how and why to the results that they're getting. So you need to sort of test the waters in different areas and see what works for you. For me, I've done boxing, kickboxing, Zumba, which you never wanna see me in a Zumba class. I've done yoga, which I liked, but I found got really repetitive after a while. Pilates, which was way too expensive for me, but I absolutely love. So I finally ended up settling on the gym that I'm at now, which just offers small group training, and it's sort of mixed between cardio and weights. It's a lot of strength training. It's a really interesting class, and I never ever in a million years would have thought that I liked it, but I tried it, and here I am. This one's kind of fun. Go get some workout clothes that you actually like and that are functional. So clothing that's designed specifically to support you in the workout that you're doing. So that means for us ladies, really good sports bras, good tank tops, good leggings, a good quality pair of shoes, nice socks that aren't gonna ride down your sneakers and drive you crazy when they're rubbing up against your ankle. It's all of those things. For me, because I do a lot of exercises using weights and bars, I actually got weightlifting gloves and those help protect my hands from those hideous calluses. So I usually wait until things go on sale or I'll go to a store like Winners in Canada or Marshalls or something like that where you can get discounted workout clothes. You don't need fancy expensive stuff. You just need good quality stuff that you feel great in. And also another thing I love to do is wait until the gap goes on sale because I really enjoy wearing their fitness clothing as well. I've set this rule for myself where I don't compare myself to other people. And more specifically, that means I don't look at Instagram anymore because I used to follow you know, workout gurus on Instagram and see their hashtag Transformation Tuesday photos and really great for those people, but that actually made me crazy because I would think, well, I'm working out, I'm trying to eat healthy, why don't I look like that, blah, 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 and then the monsters in my head would start talking and completely take over. So what I've realized over the past year that I've been successfully working out is not to focus on other people and their progress, but just to focus on myself and be proud that I'm freaking going to the gym. That's really all that matters. I also find it really important to not get caught up in the numbers or tracking your progress too much. Now, this might sound counterintuitive because if you're going and you wanna lose weight or whatever, you might wanna look at those numbers. But for me, I found at my gym, they wanted to measure and do a body composition every two weeks. And I used to do it and then I would get like nervous and then I would get angry at myself and it was just this whole wave of emotions. And they were like, no, but it really helps us understand how you're doing. And I thought, you know what? I don't like, I don't need to see this. I don't need to do this. This is just making me more frustrated. So now I'll check in once every couple of months just to see how I'm doing and decide, okay, do I need to change anything either in the way that I'm eating or in the amount of weight that I'm working with, like that kind of stuff but I don't look at it so frequently anymore because that I found was actually really making me crazy. Being realistic is one of the most valuable things you can do when you're setting yourself up for going to the gym. I think my biggest downfall when I was younger is that I wasn't realistic. I was eating like a pig and then I would go to the gym a couple times a week, run on the treadmill for 30 minutes, use a couple weight machines and be really upset that I wasn't losing weight. Well, the truth is 
that's not how you lose weight. You have to change the way you eat, you have to significantly up your cardio, and you have to build muscle. And you know, my full-time job is not working out. I work out just to be healthy, to be in good shape, and to be proud of my body. So I don't look at the numbers anymore. I don't worry about losing weight. I just kind of put that stuff out of my head. If I lose weight, great. If I don't, fine. If I gain muscle, great. If I don't, that's okay too. I just focus on being healthy and that's really all that matters. I'd love to know in the comments down below, what have you done to get yourself motivated to go to the gym? And of course, to stay on course and to keep going to the gym. Or if it's not going to the gym, just whatever fitness regimen that you have. This is something that I've struggled with, like I said, for years. And now in the past year, I've actually been quite successful at it. And I've shared my tips with you guys. So I'd really love to know what you do because it might help me or someone else as well. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and you can share it with someone if you know that they're having a tough time making it to the gym on the regular. If you haven't done so already, remember that you can subscribe to this channel to get more videos just like this. And you can check out these two videos over here, which might be really interesting to you as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.